Okay, the direction on the bag had me melt those in a double boiler, which is what this pan is right here. Um, this one's really nice. It's one of my favorite pans. Uh, it's double walled. You put the, the water on the inside of the wall, so there's never any water dripping or any steam potential to burn yourself. And to... I guess it's called dipping, but really you just need to kind of pour, hold it horizontal over the pan, kind of at an angle maybe. I'm going to get the cookie covered. Now it looks all kind of gloppy now but that's the second part it is warm it does flow cover the cookie with a nice thick layer and let the heavy fall Kind of knocking it against the side of the pan as you go. And it actually will smooth out quite a bit. This is this is one of the time consuming parts. And when you get it so no big lumps are falling off, just kind of drips. You have your wax strips. Is my beaker. Nice tall container. So it sets. And it takes several minutes to, te to set, but during that time is when you can make the candle. Okay, here comes the fun part. Time to use the torch. So, this is a sheet of foil. I think it's folded over so, while you're doing it. Um, so first thing you do is you start with yellow. And you make a thin layer of yellow into the shape of a flame which means a rounded bottom and a small pointed top. You want to kind of keep the edges all nice and neat and you want to keep it a nice uniform thickness. Um, when you add the wick and the other colors you'll have the tendency to get it thick at the bottom more than the top and you do want to make sure the top is still fairly thick otherwise it will try and snap off when you use it okay my little torch turn it on save do okay and you just kind of heat up the candy Then you add a pinch of red, melt that in, and then you look for your toothpick. I'm going to add a little bit more red. You lay your toothpick on, it should be about a half inch in. Add another little pinch of red. Nice cover of yellow, including yellow all the way out to the end, so it's fairly uniform. Really warm, and I can pick it up. The candy, on the other hand, is very hot, but since it is on foil, it only takes a few minutes to cool down. So you want to make sure that it is cooled down, and then it will peel right off the 
the foil and I'll give it a few minutes. Okay, so I have my flame and I very carefully kind of pull the foil away from it until I get Get a good start. You and you don't want to break it. If you are making more, usually by the time you got them all made, the first one will be cool enough to to peel off. It doesn't need any release. It should just come off fairly easily. There. So now I have my flame. But the edges are kind of messy. And for that, you need your torch again. And you just use the torch along the edge. Take off the sharp edges, get a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to pinch it into shape. It is hot, but my fingers have enough sugar on them, it's covering it up. So I can do that. Now you have a three dimensional kind of flame. And it is colored like a flame, it's just not all the same color. It's got the different reds and different tones into it. Then you take your candle, which by now has set up. And you just poke the toothpick into the end. And there you have it. An edible candy and cookie candle. I leave the skewer in when I put them in the cake. That way I don't have to worry about making a kind of big hole in the cake. You have the wax dripping down one edge, the flame that lights up very nice in the light, and everybody will go ooh and ah. Uh, one bag of the chocolates will make about six or seven candles. So, there you go. Merry Christmas.